This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and just as we did with Surface Book, I'm doing a long-term follow-up review with the Apple iPad Pro. Three months, if you can call that long-term. In, in the world of technology, it kind of is. So when I were first reviewed this, I wasn't so excited by the iPad Pro itself. It was kind of just like a giant well, iPad Air, but then we got a hold of the Apple Pencil and we had a separate review of that and that really changed things a lot. So how has that all worked out in the last three months of me using it? We're going to find out now. It's back, the iPad Pro. We've been using this for several months now and Apple's biggest tablet with a 12.9 inch retina display and their fastest CPU yet uh, are still performing well. No bogging down, no getting slow fastest iPad used to date. No arguments with that. I don't think anybody's going to say otherwise. Still an expensive proposition. $799 starting price for a Wi-Fi only model. Available with 32 gigs or 128 gigs of storage. I mean, lately, a couple of places are having them on sale. Like Micro Center had them for $699. That's a pretty good deal right there. And by the way, for those of you who don't know it, the Apple Store will match other stores. Not eBay, not Craigslist, but regular old stores like Best Buy, Micro Center, all that kind of thing. Up to 10% off. So keep that in mind if you're shopping for something like this. We have the optional accessory keyboard that Apple makes. This The last time we reviewed this, we reviewed it with the Logitech keyboard, the Logitech Create keyboard, which was more readily available and was a more normal kind of keyboard with your traditional kind of keys. It actually had an FN row for multimedia keys there. And Apple's keyboard is more, well, it's origami, like obviously, sort of like their smart covers, and it's a membrane keyboard. And at first, I really didn't like it. But then we got one in-house, and I started using it. And other than the fact it's kind of noisy, in the same way that the Surface Pro 3 and 4 type covers are, because there's something about this sort of material. It just reverberates a little bit. You can... You'll, you'll hear sounds a little bit. Other than that, it actually works well. It reminds me of the 12-inch MacBook insofar as it's a keyboard that I hate, but I type really well on. I hate because it just doesn't feel like a traditional keyboard, but it really gets the job done. What don't I like? No trackpad. Now, the lack of a trackpad brings this screen closer to you, so you don't really have to go, oh, you know, when you're using a touchscreen laptop, particularly a bigger one, sometimes it seems like a big reach. It's not so ergonomic as Steve Jobs reminded us. So yes, the screen is close so I can touch it, but it's not so precise as a cursor, is it? Your finger. You could use, aha, uh -huh, the Apple Pencil. Sold separately. Still $99. Yes, I broke, broke this off of one of my other pens, so I had a way to clip it to the keyboard cover. You can do that too. It's an easy solution. And by the way, if that comes off so you can charge it. There's magnets on your iPad, so you can actually just put it onto the smart cover or onto the iPad if you don't want to lose it. But anyway, that aside, it's muscle memory. When you're used to using a laptop, you're used to a trackpad, and you're used to the precision of the trackpad for placing your cursor. So that still kind of drives me crazy. The single angle that this is at, it's worked for me in a variety of use cases. I don't have an issue with that. The laptop, so to speak, position is very stable thanks to magnets. If you flip it over, which is like a little IQ test unto itself, figuring out how you do this the first time around, but you bend that like that, then you do that, and then you have this, and you can use it as a stand. Now, once or twice or more so, it seems really locked in, and this is how Apple intends you to use it. But I've had <laughs> it flop over and hit the ground, you know, the, the table back there, which can be really startling if you're sitting across from somebody and you nearly landed in their soup. So not perfect. There is an unofficial way of turning it into a stand for when you are using it for writing on the desk or drawing. There are no magnets really holding it in place, but you can kind of do it. Like so. And you find the sweep spot where it actually does want to stay. So then it does kind of work. So you can do that too if you want to. So what have I used this for? I made myself use this, even though I'm much more comfortable with using laptops rather than tablets to try to get work done. But every night I sit in front of the TV and I write those wonderful written reviews for Mobile Tech Review. And I've been using Office 365 on this. If you have an Office 365 subscription, you get tablet included with that. That means mobile OS tablet here. So here we have Word. And you've got a fairly decent selection of things in terms of formatting and insert, you can do headers and footers, page numbers, all that sort of thing. There are some add-ons, table of contents, things like that, not so much. Now multitasking, that's something that's real important to me and I like to have a couple of windows open. For example, I keep notes in OneNote. So the multitasking works pretty well here. I already have OneNote selected. So I can have 
my little cheat sheet of some specs for the Lumia I'm writing about, and I can split them in half. And because you have about the same amount of real estate right here that you would two iPad Airs side by side, it actually does work. Floating windows for me, you know, like you have on your regular windows or Mac OS machine, still my most favorite solution, but this actually is surprisingly workable. And likewise, if I want to have TweetBot or something like that going on the side or my email so I can check up on that, it works pretty well. And it stays pretty darn sprightly, which is nice. So bad things, only one Word document open at a time. If you want to compare something from one Word document to another, you can't do it. What you could do is open it up in pages. Since you get Apple's iWork suite on this, there is a way to get two documents open at the same time, but it's not as nice as being able to have like five Word files open if you want to at once, right? So that's where you can get work done, but only to a certain level. And you know best how you usually use your machine and what you're going to want it to do. I still think of this as a companion machine. Again, this the thing that you use in front of the TV at night when you're working and multitasking, watching TV at the same time, or if you're on the road needing to get stuff done, that sort of thing. But as a main machine, unless your needs are fairly light, like no side-by-side -side Word documents being an absolute must for requirement, no floating window kind of multitasking, well, there it is. For entertainment, it certainly is the bee's knees. I mean, you got Netflix here, you got Amazon Video, you have YouTube, of course, you have four speakers built in. It sounds good. I use it a lot for that. The absolute volume isn't super duper loud. I tend to use it near max volume if I'm using exercise equipment because that's loud in itself, but I can still hear it. And for a tablet, it's fairly full and rich sounding, not so tinny as some even 13 inch laptops or the iPad mini, for example, which of course being a teeny little tablet doesn't sound so good. Web browsing on the bigger screen here, and we actually have IGN's website, not our own, because this is such a rich and busy website. It looks like you're using a nice modern laptop, doesn't it? It looks absolutely beautiful. So it works well for that, and given how little content is in Adobe Flash, I haven't had much problem with playing embedded videos that are on websites as well. So for web browsing, multiple tabs and a whole goody stuff there, that's going to get the job done too. For books, awesome for books. You got Kindle now also optimized for the iPad Pro. If you're going to be reading comic books, it's super duper great. For Zinio, for magazines, I mean this is like the ideal size right here and things just look so beautiful on this. It, it's just a huge screen. Of course you can flip it over to portrait mode if you want to get that kind of view on it. And there it is just looking sharp and gorgeous. And, and this is how a magazine was meant to be read, right? If you're trying to do this on an iPad mini, you know how it's, eh. If you're doing it on an iPad Air, it's pretty nice. It could be better. This is just like, ooh la la. Really nice. Very color accurate and bright screen too. So it happens to be great for things like looking at a photography magazine, which is a strong interest of mine. Now, I think one of the real reasons to buy one of these is if you're into art. Now, you know I have a Surface Book. I have a Surface Pro 4. I love those two. I have to say this still for, for the naturalness of drawing for the tilt support right here is my favorite so far. And in fact, beyond using the, the Surface Liner products for drawing, there I've used things like this, which we are going to be reviewing. This is the Wacom Cintiq Companion, uh, PC Companion 2, and <laughs> this is actually a full Windows PC. It is big, it is heavy, it is atavistic. It's also very precise. It uses the old Wacom EMR technology. Uh, this is not the most comfortable thing to hold in your lap. This still is the professional choice for a lot of folks who are working in professional illustration who are doing... Uh, the artwork for the video games that you play, that sort of thing. So there's a lot to be said for this still, but as for those of us who are not working professionally but do want to sketch and draw, or who perhaps want something more portable they can take anywhere it, and then work on the file later here, there's something to be said for something this giant and heavy versus, well, that. So what programs do I use? I have several here that you can see that I use for art. Now, art is a hobby for me. I don't do that professionally. Photography, I do all the photography for our website. I do that very seriously. This is a hobby for me, so some of you who are professionals will have, certainly will have your opinions on this. I think it's a great starting point for doing your art and then bringing it over later to a PC or a Mac to do the, the finishing stuff, including a Cintiq Companion. Paper is the more, most arts and craftsy one. I actually don't use it that much for my kind of natural media sketching and drawing and my cartoon kind of stuff. Adobe Sketch, it isn't bad. There is always Autodesk Sketchbook, it's okay. Procreate, absolutely awesome. 
And you can see right here the, the, the shading that I've gotten, the kind of realism. It, it's just really a very nice program. Supports layers, PSD output, all sorts of good stuff. It's, it's just fantastic, the side shading that you get with that. Look at that. I mean, that is so natural media. It, this is like drawing on paper. This encourages me to draw more instead of feeling like I'm having a little bit of a fight with a digital product. And for those of you who say, well, how am I going to get my files on and off? Yeah, all of these programs support iCloud. So you can put stuff up on iCloud. You could also use OneDrive, Dropbox, all those other services. But iCloud is just the easiest. So that's what I do. I don't bother with the wireless hard drives or the lightning flash drives that you can plug into the poor little butt of the product right here if you want to do that. I'd use the cloud. And when it comes to file sizes, you can do up to 16K canvases in this. You can do very large pieces of art. And honestly, yeah, you can get this with a 32 gig level of storage or 128 gigs. I, even really big files, I haven't seen anybody with a 5 gig art image that often. But if you have a 32 gig iPad, you could still accommodate that if you needed to do so. The other app I use a lot is Pixelmator. Now, it, it's a, a two pronged app. You know, it, it, it's kind of like the closest thing you're going to see to Photoshop, even surpassing any. Adobe's mobile Photoshop apps, which none of which are that great actually on iOS. And it also is a drawing program with 100 brushes, about 30 of which support the tilt feature on the pencil. So right now it's a pretty simple user interface. And if you want to see the, the tools, it's a remarkable selection of tools you got here. All sorts of markers. We have ink right here. And we even have calligraphy brushes, Chinese brush. Now our senior editor, Tong Zhang, who is Chinese and does do brush painting, says this is just the bee's knees and beats any other simulation of a Chinese brush painting that you could ever want on this. We have various paints. We have oil paints. You got every kind of pencil you can want and charcoal and all that sort of thing, including smudging, which is kind of neat. And again, it's when you're not choosing white. There we go. As a color, I was doing some erasing. It's a very nice, natural kind of flow right here. It, it, it feels real. It doesn't feel so digital and pen-like. It feels more like a natural media painting experience. Pressure levels are excellent on this product. And it really, it's just got me hooked on drawing and doing digital painting again. Another thing is the pencil itself, the $99 accessory right here that charges quickly by plugging into the lightning port of this, or you can actually plug it into the charger. At first I thought the length, although very pencil-like, was kind of excessively skeuomorphistic. That is too much just like a real pencil. Well, it's actually very nice for painting movements because you'd use a longer brush. It's not like, you know, holding a pencil when you're drawing. So this actually works for both kind of media pretty well. I'm still not fond of the slipperiness of it, the very slick slickness. Probably because Apple wanted to make it white, and the only way you can stop white from discoloring easily is by giving it a very glossy service. So that that is what it is. Anyway, it's it's been fantastic. It's also good for photo editing, but some of you are going to say, like, I want real photo editing. I want real Photoshop. Guess what? There's real Photoshop, and you don't have to use one of these anymore, which is... Boy, I just don't like using these anymore, honestly. I like to really draw directly on the screen or select on the screen when I can do that using either our Windows tablet or the iPad Pro. So there's a program called AstroPad. AstroPad costs about 20 bucks, as does Procreate, that art app I showed you. Pixelmator is around, I think, $6 or so. For those of you who like vector art, Autodesk puts out something called Graphic, which is a vector program that's actually not painful to use. It's easier to use than certainly Illustrator. Anyway, we're going to AstroPad our way into this. This is Adobe Photoshop running on my MacBook Pro. This is my screen of it right here. So this is connecting over Wi-Fi. You can either use the USB lightning cable or you can use Wi-Fi. Obviously Wi-Fi is a lot nicer. They don't have to be physically this close. It's that close so you can see both of them. So say I want to select right over here this cute picture of the kitty that I put up on our Instagram the other day. And there are some Ethernet cables photobombing in there and so I want to get rid of them. So I have used the pencil to select right here. It's a lot easier than using that USB tablet that I showed you. So I'm just going to select it again. So I've selected it over here and I can hit the delete key on this keyboard. I can hit the, the delete key on this keyboard. Depends on how your mapping is. Using content aware to get rid of it. So we're actually in Photoshop right here. This is mirroring my, my screen on my Mac. 
boom, there it is. I've gotten rid of it a lot easier than using the mouse, a lot more pleasant than using a USB graphics tablet. So for those of you who do want to work in Photoshop, but you want to be able to use the pen on the screen, finally, without buying a Wacom Cintiq, the, the kind that you plug in, you know, via USB to your Mac or your PC, here it is. You can do that with your iPad Pro. Pretty darn neat. Lastly, I use this with PDFs uh, for marking them up. Yes, and I know a lot of you, especially students, have to do that quite often. But also just we have to sign contracts and things like that. They're either in Word or they're in PDF format. So you can sign in Word, no problem with the pen. It supports the pen. There are programs like Adobe Fill and Sign right here. There are also PDF annotation apps that really rock for this. There is... AutoCAD 360 for this, I am no CAD jockey. I am no CAD expert, so I can't really speak to how well they work. I'm just telling you about the things that I use daily that work for me. And there you have it. If you can accept the limitations, that is no direct access to the file system and the multitasking that works well, but you're never going to have floating windows or three programs going at once, you can actually get a lot done with this. And particularly for art, it just totally rocks. So that said, this thing is beautiful. It's big screen. It can feel like a laptop in terms of uh, the size of the screen, the resolution, and all that sort of thing when you're using it with an optional keyboard. It's 1.6 pounds, so, you know, it's pretty light. It's pretty thin. It feels a little delicate because it's so darn thin. It's easy to take anywhere. However, it's still not a full computer. It can't run every single desktop program ever written, obviously, and some of the important ones that you may use, SQL Server, whatever it is, software development, that sort of thing. So that's why I say this is still not a full computer replacement, and it's not cheap either. So really, you see the things that work well for me and that I use it for. Weigh that against the things that you do, and consider those things that it can do. Again, software development, this is really not the product to do software development directly on this. Um, if you're doing SQL, if you're doing code compiles, if you're really a professional working with CAD, maybe you can get the start of your drawings here. Again, I'm not a CAD expert to say about how far you can go with this, but it's not going to replace your ThinkPad workstation or your HP ZBook or something like that. But if it does do the things that are important to you, as you've seen the sort of things that I'm doing with it, and it sounds worthwhile, the benefit, of course, is yeah, you don't have access to the file system. You also can't screw this thing up. It, you're not going to have uh, trash Mac OS or missing DLL files like you do under Windows. It's going to be instant on. It's not going to interrupt you with updates and virus updates and all that sort of thing. The battery life on this is phenomenal. It is just really hard to kill, especially, you know, Surface Book, when you're using it as a laptop, with the base on and the battery there, you get really nice long battery life. Yeah, but when you separate it, the, the, the tablet's about three hours or so. Of course, you can plug the charger directly into the tablet on Surface Book, but that's still a lot shorter than this. This typically I charge every two, three days. And that is just something I can draw for hours on this, watch an hour long episode of Netflix while I'm exercising, surf the web, play some other short videos. And I've used like, 18% of the battery or so. It's just really great. So you get the carefree aspect. That's something that's kind of nice about not having a full PC experience here. Again, weigh it against your needs and what's important to you and hope that helps. So there you have it. The iPad Pro after three months, what I think of it. And actually, as you can tell, it's improved quite a bit. Uh, it helps that the Apple keyboard is less sucky than I thought it would be when you actually start using it. Of course, there are a lot of keyboard alternatives for those of you who want to use this as a laptop replacement. The Apple Pencil is just hard to beat. It's pretty darn brilliant. I've been using, like I said, these things since the very first Wacom USB tablet back when it was a serial connection to the tablet long time and yeah th th this is good stuff this is very nice right here it's still not a complete laptop replacement for power users it is a laptop replacement potentially for those of you who do everyday kind of stuff it is definitely a tool that you want if you do artwork even if you're not going to produce your final stuff on here you can do the the first two-thirds of what you're going to be doing normally anywhere else on this and probably enjoy the pen experience a lot more than many other products out there so there you have it. You surface people, I know you're not going to like this, but hey, it, it gets the job done. Yes, it's expensive, but yes, it's also pretty cool. It's also darn fun for watching Netflix and Amazon Prime videos. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to watch our, our full review of this, the original one, the pencil review. Read our written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.